You know, I like to tell people, if you like to eat, wear clothes, live in a house, drive a car, you like plant science. Plants are everywhere in our daily lives. They make up everything that we eat. Even if you eat animals, then the animal has eaten a plant. They also make up the clothes that we wear, the structures that we live in. So we use plants every moment of every day. But we also see plants in our natural world. Just walk outside and look at what's growing around you. My name is Katie Murphy. I am the Director of Phenotyping and a Principal Investigator here at the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center. People often say the arch is actually a giant magnet for plant scientists that brings together the best and the brightest across the world. We have the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center here where we are, the Missouri Botanical Garden, which is one of the best in the world, as well as a lot of great educational institutions that are giving people degrees in plant science. But importantly, you're also centered where food is being grown. You can't drive 20 minutes without throwing a rock in a cornfield, and so you actually get to be a part of the community of the farmers where food is being grown. And I think that's really important as we think about the impact that our, our research can have. My favorite plant is corn, and the list of reasons is probably too long. For one, it tastes great, right? Who doesn't love to eat an ear of corn? But as a scientist, I love corn because it's just so fun to work on. Corn is this plant that is high yielding. We can get a lot of corn out of a very small area of land compared to other crops. It's also a sibling to, to other species as well. If we can understand something in corn, we can translate that into other plants. My favorite project by far and so far at the Danforth Center was a large experiment we did on corn in our high throughput phenotyping facility. So we tested out 47 different types of corn and we threw all of the worst conditions at this corn. We didn't water them enough. We put them in, in high temperatures. We didn't give them enough fertilizer. We combined multiple, what we would call stressful conditions like these, because we wanted to evaluate these different types of corn to, to find the ones that actually perform well under these stressful conditions. In addition to being this, this epicenter for plant science, St. Louis now has this really excellent geospatial community. And now what we're doing is we're combining plant science with geospatial science. So in a most basic example, how do we use satellites to take images of fields and understand the plants being grown there? How do we use drones to better evaluate plants as they're growing and reduce some of the human labor that goes into collecting measurements on a farm? All of these things are only made possible because of the community that's willing to work together here within these two great disciplines. As part of my work at the Danforth Center, I started a social media outreach project in 2020 called Real Time Science. The goal was to just show the research that we were doing, science in real time, to anyone who was out there on social media. Social media is a great way to get kids interested in science because they're already there. Right? They're already on social media, so let's meet them where they are and in a place that they're already having fun. One day, I got a text message from a friend of mine in high school. She now teaches elementary school in Idaho, and she said, Katie, you're not going to believe this, but you are in my email today. And so there was a site that essentially curates stories for teachers to give to their students to understand what's going on in the world and they were highlighting our social media outreach project. So it was exciting to see how far the reach of social media can take you, how far it can take your research. Despite many decades of, of effort for many folks, women are still underrepresented in, in science leadership and science at the higher levels. And so it's really important to me to both be a role model for girls and young women who are interested in scientific careers and try to help others to make sure they can enter those careers and not have some of those same barriers, showing people what a scientist actually looks like. We know that students used to draw scientists as old men in lab coats, and that reality is really changing as people get to see who scientists are. To all the young people who are interested in a career in science, and specifically plant science, you're in luck. We will never be able to answer all of the questions that we have about what makes plants tick, what makes plants live. So keep studying, have fun, there's space in plant science for everyone.